What's up YouTube? Today we're going to talk a little bit about what you should do when you find a computer and you have no idea when it was last powered on, what kind of condition it's in. You want to get it running, but you also don't want to just plug it in because if you do that and the power supplies aren't in great shape, they can fry all the components in your machine and you're in for a real problem. So today we're going to look at a marvelously uncommon Three Rivers Perk. Three Rivers Computer Corporation was a company based in Pittsburgh that made an early workstation following the Alto. I'm fortunate enough to have one that I just picked up from a trip to Pittsburgh. No idea what kind of shape it's in. So we're going to go through a few steps on how to responsibly bring the machine up and make sure that you're not going to fry anything. Now, one ask is don't repeat the steps you see here if you don't know what you're doing. I can't be held liable for you burning down your house if you try and follow the instructions in this video. So let's just say that this is for informational and entertainment purposes only, but the same steps do apply to really anything you could find from a Commodore 64 to an Alto. So why are we out here in the rain? Well, the thing I need to do this is actually in my car. It's not just in my car, because it's not this Sony Magic Link general keyboard. No, it's actually the tail light from my 1990 Mercedes-Benz S-Class. What are we gonna do with this? Let's find out. So a couple things before this video gets rolling. The first is that the Perk is a really neat machine. It deserves a video on its own, maybe even a series of videos, and it will get one. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if that's the kind of thing you're interested in seeing. The real intent here is I have this thing. I picked it up a few months ago, and with you know being stuck inside, I really just want to see it run. So I'm going to do a pretty basic cursory series of checks on this machine, which are really the bare minimum I would recommend for any system you just pull out of storage um, and unknown condition. I'm not going to be extremely rigorous because there's no VLSI in this machine where, you know, if there was a power supply event, I'd actually lose logic that I can't replace. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm pulling all the cards out. Um, and now I'm going to open up the side here to check out the hard drive. This is a 14 inch Shugart drive. It should have been parked when it was shipped, um, and sadly it wasn't. We had only a few hours to deal with everything in Pittsburgh, and frankly, we just forgot. It's a pretty big error on my part, but um, we'll see how badly that comes back to bite us later. So obviously I was expecting on this monstrous 15 megabyte drive for the parking clip to be intact. Those are the platters you see there on the left. They're about the size of a large pizza. I'm very confused in that last shot because it's not parked. Finally, it dawns on me. Oh crap, we just didn't do it. Now I'm going to disconnect the power to the drive. If you'll note, I actually do miss a cord. Um, I will come back for that one. Do not try this at home. We're going to plug this thing in. It's going to be hooked up to mains power. We have a big 5 volt rail that we're going to be monitoring. If something shorted, those little jumper cables that I'm using, they would just catch fire on the spot. So again, this is just for instructional purposes. Uh, don't try it at home. Now I've got the tail light from my car. What are we doing with that? That's actually a dummy load. I'm using it kind of as a, a resistor. The switch mode power supplies in these types of machines, they actually won't come up properly without a load on them. So with all the circuitry removed from this machine and the drive disconnected, I'm actually gonna use this multimeter to figure out where on that connector one of my tail light bulbs is. And we're gonna hook that up to the power supply in place of valuable circuitry so that when we turn this thing on, we'll actually have some load under it and we can check things out. Another thing I'd probably suggest is if you find a machine like the Perk, I'm being pretty, pretty impatient here because supply chains are difficult right now, but I would actually recommend removing the power supplies, checking for capacitor leakage, checking for burnt components, burnt traces, damage, do a pretty clear visual inspection, and actually just go ahead and preemptively replace all the capacitors in that power supply. Again, we're not going to do it in this video, but I'm probably going to do that to this machine pretty soon after this. Now before we throw the switch, we're going to take one last look around, make sure everything is connected correctly, nothing's shorted, nothing's sitting where it shouldn't be, all the cards are removed, everything's disconnected, and in a second we're going to throw the switch and see if the light comes on. Look at that. 
So the five volt rail, which is the one we're clipped onto right now, is coming up. Um, let's take a closer look at that rail and actually measure it and make sure it's behaving within spec. And again, what we're doing here isn't exhaustive. We're not proving that the power supply is good or that it won't collapse under sustained usage or load. What we're doing here is just something that's a lot better than just plugging the thing in and hoping for the best. And the multimeter on the 5 volt rail is showing a healthy 5.1 volts. The number's not bouncing around. Does that mean we're done here? No, absolutely not. Actually, measuring with a multimeter is a great first step, but it's not sufficient. The multimeter essentially takes an average of the voltage over time. It's a very fast average, but in order to actually see if the power supply is filtering correctly, the voltage isn't fluctuating over time, there's not transients, we actually need to hook up an oscilloscope before I'd feel comfortable plugging these cards into the card cage and running the thing. This process is known as measuring ripple, which is the residual periodic variation of DC voltage in a power supply that has derived those DC voltages from AC. Your AC voltage is switching back and forth 50 or 60 times a second, and you want to make sure that that variation isn't carried through to your DC rails due to improper filtering, in most cases at this age of a device caused by bad electrolytic capacitors on either the input or output filter stages. And what we see on the scope over all reasonable time bases is a nice straight line. So our five volt rail's good, but obviously on these systems, there's a lot more than that. This system requires negative five, plus 12, negative 12, 24, and 55. We'll measure those off camera. Even a basic C64 or PC is gonna have multiple rails like plus five, minus five, and plus 12, negative 12. Make sure to measure all of them you may need a different type of load than just an automotive light bulb. Take a look at the specs of the power supply and the rails you're measuring. Now we're gonna reinstall first the IO board on the right, then the memory, and now our CPU. Let's give this thing a shot and see what it does for the first startup. If you caught it a second ago, we also connected the power to the hard drive, both the DC and AC rails, and here's our display. Let's give it a shot. Right off the bat, I'm not liking the sound of that hard drive. It looks like we need to check the belt tension and maybe replace it. I should have checked that earlier. Hindsight's 2020, but it sounds like it's going to stabilize. That's certainly not my favorite sound. Now, the other thing I'd normally do is actually image the hard drive in the machine, but I don't really have a good way to do that for the SA4000 drive, so we're just going to have to start it up and kind of hope for the best. I would be being much more cautious if this was a machine where I didn't have operating system media readily available for most of the environments and software that was actually ever available. Okay, so we have a raster, and now we have something, which is the microcode doing its thing, writing memory to the screen. Microcode's going to disappear. Again, the, the screen is now just free-running sync again. Let's give it another second. I think it's going to do something. Look at that. The hard drive's seeking. That giant giant stepper motor and oh my gosh we have a single user mode for what I believe to be Perk PNX or Penix which is Perk's kind of Unix variant this looks pretty good unfortunately there's really nothing else we can do because you know desk authority bought all the keyboards for every cool old workstation machine and left those of us with the actual machines without any keyboards so next week I'm gonna have to start working on a keyboard emulator there's always so much to do around here, keeping these things running, so be sure to check back. We're going to have some more videos on this machine and a bunch of other ones. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you like this content, go ahead and like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, T underscore R underscore zero underscore N. Cheers.